Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Islam, the way of life, our very own show from Ikra TV. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'een. As I always start with our show, I'd like to start with praising Allah and giving salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I would like us to begin with recitation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبوا إلى الله توبة نسوحا عسى ربكم أن يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار يوم لا يخزي الله يوم لا يخزي الله النبي والذين آمنوا معه نورهم يسعى بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم يقولون ربنا يقولون ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار والمنافقين واغلظ عليهم وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا امْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَامْرَأَةَ لُوطٍ كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحَيْنِ فَخَانَتَاهُمَا فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَا عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَقِيلَ ادْخُلَا النَّارَ مَعَ الدَّاخِلِينَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Sadaqallahu al-Aliyu al-Azim, mashallah. That's beautiful, beautiful recitation. Um, thank you for joining us as always and we love to have you on our show. And if you've got anything you want to send to us or any questions you have, across the bottom of the screen right now is our email address and our WhatsApp number. And as we've said every single episode, please feel sending your comments, sending your videos, sending some good sick stuff that you've done and we will take do our best to try to show your video or show some of the things that you're sending us or talk about some of the things or maybe you have a greeting for someone. So much we can do together but inshallah you are the people that are making us do this show so we really like to hear from you as well. I have some new guests and I have one of our original guests so I'm going to now pass over to my new guest. I should have introduced myself, I'm Abul Hasna, just a reminder those of you that are joining us new and I'll be your host for this series on Islam, the way of life. But I'm going to start with this young lady here. I would like you to look at the cameras, do salam, tell, say your name and how old are you? Assalamu alaikum. I'm Tushan and I'm seven years old. MashaAllah, this is Tushan and she's seven years old. And young lady in the middle, can you do salam to everyone? Say salam for us. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. What's your name? Taisha. Taisha, very good. And how old are you, Taisha? Four years old. We have Tushana seven, Taisha four years old. And we have one of our original members back, a young man. Everyone knows you now. Do salam to everyone and say your name. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu 
Uh, said that actually. Uh, my What's name is name? Suleiman and I'm eight years old. Ah, oh, Suleiman is so used to doing it that he forgot to start. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Well, it's good to have our new guests here, um, some of our viewers. Uh, and these two guys want to come on the show. Alhamdulillah, great to have them. And uh, great to have our young Suleiman here with us as well. I'm now, nearly nine. What's that? I'm nearly nine, I'm not young. You're nearly nine. You're becoming an old man, I'm aren't you? I'm nearly eight. And you're nearly eight. Wow. These because guys are catching up I, Because with my birthday is in November the 24th. Everyone remember that? She's nine years old. Grown ups want no, to be no, young. Eight. She's going to be eight years old. November's coming. Uh, yeah. yeah, very good. Grown ups okay. want to be young and when young Kassia people want to be, be old. Five, when my sister will be five, she will go to mosque. Mashallah. Mosque. And that's, that's an important thing. And I forgot to say, these guys are siblings here. So they're two sisters. So, so shana has been talking to me about how like, she likes to go forward. And she's looking forward to when Taisha becomes five years old and she's going to start her. going to the mosque. Aren't you, Taisha? Yeah. And Suleiman, you've been going to a lost mosque for a long time, haven't you? I don't know when. You don't um, know when he started. That's how long ago. Wow. Well, we did, we did start with some Quran recitation and we're going to, I'm going to get one of my guests because Tushana promised me that she will do me Surah Nas. Yeah. Yeah. Tushana is going to do for us Surah Nas. So Tushana, I would like you to now sit up straight, look straight at the camera and recite for us Surah Nas starting with A'udhu Billah and Bismillah. Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas, Malikin Nas, Ilahi Nas. Min shari was was silk on nas. Allah zi he was with the feast to the rin nas. Min el janati wan nas. MashaAllah, Mamtaz Tabarakallah. Just to let you guys know at home, it is not easy sometimes to stand up and to recite in front of us. So Tushana has been a very brave young lady because she has recited Surah Nas and it's the first time she's done this on TV, so mashallah, well done to Shana. Okay, Thank you. you're welcome. Right, we are going to first start with. Um, actually, we're going to start with the Sira to, um, because Sulaiman, you reminded me before we came on air. Sulaiman reminded me that last week we spoke about the Prophet's early life and I kept mentioning to you guys that we've spoken about him being fostered and about and the incident of Jibreel and Suleiman said to me oh hold on a second Uncle Hasnat I don't think we've done the Jibreel part have we yeah. so we're going to talk about the time yeah. that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was only one fostered. second only uh, one word only one word of it so we're going wow. today's Sira we're going to talk about when the Prophet was a baby and what happened to the baby? So, are you guys ready for it? Yeah! Yeah! Good, 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 inshallah. Right, let's start. So, first I'm going to introduce the, what is nursing children in Arabia. So, the Arabs had a practice where they took children that were of a posh or a not a posh is probably not the right word, that were people of a higher class, the richer families, who would give their children to Bedouin families to look after. And the reason being because they lived in the city, so Makkah was a very busy city, and they felt that the Bedouins went from one city to another city, because the Bedouins are travelling sand people, aren't they? So they would take them and they would raise these children, and the children would become strong from being out in the desert life, and these children will also learn a pure Arabic language and not the shortcut language of the city. And then also, there's many actually benefits, and I'm going to go over them now because I have them listed here. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was one of those babies that was put up for fostering and would go with, and stay with a Bedouin family. Now, we know from last time that his, he was looked, up, um, looked after by his mum, Amina, up to the age of six. So, Amina put him up for, um, put him up for um, fostering. Now, um, there was, um, there was a tribe of Bedouins from the Banu Sa'ad ibn Bakr and they had a nurse called Halima. Halima bin Sa'adiyah. Okay, Sa Halima bin Sa'adiyah. Halima had just had a child of her own as well, so probably about a few months older than the Prophet and she had a very weak goat. So when she went to Makkah and went and knocked on people's doors, because that's how they did them, knocked on, do you want your child to be fostered? Do you want your child to be fostered? Most of the other Bedouin ladies were given babies to foster, but not many people gave to Halima because Halima, they didn't see as a very strong candidate. Now, they saw she had a weak goat and you know, she's also got children of her own to look after. So not everybody was given. And plus, 
they would obviously charge a price for this. Halima wasn't charging much because she realized she wasn't going to get much from people. Eventually, Halima got to the house of the, um, where the Prophet was, to Amina's house. And so Amina could only pay a small amount and Halima was happy to do this. But Halima said that the moment she took the Prophet to foster, she just saw blessing after blessing. Like even her own goat, which was becoming old and fragile, suddenly became healthy and strong. So there were so many blessings from Amina taking her. Um, I'm just going to read a bit from what I've written down. So Halima narrates this herself. So in the first person, she tells us this hadith. So she this is what Halima says. Me and my husband suffered greatly from poverty. They were nursing, um, um, we were nursing because that was a need. So she's basically trying to tell us that life was tough for her. Um, and even to get the child of Abdul Muttalib was very special because it, he was a very special child. The Prophet ﷺ was a, a, one of the best child because he was Abdul Muttalib. But she carries on saying, she said to her, she said, we were struck, me and my husband were struggling in life and I convinced my husband to allow us to go and foster. So um, she also goes on to say, I'd also just given birth to a new son. So I was able to meet, milk two children if I need to. And I also had a daughter that would help me called Shayma. So all of us new mothers entered Makkah and we were all told about this orphan child. So what she's saying is, the orphan child meaning Muhammad, all of them were told about Muhammad and none of them wanted to go because they think if it's an orphan child, we're not going to get paid that much money. So throughout that whole week, I was knocking on doors and by the end of the week, all the other women that had gone with me had managed to find a child to foster and be paid for it. But I didn't, and there was only one child left, which was this orphan child being looked after by Amina. So, my husband said to me, let's take him and maybe Allah will bless us. Mm. And as soon as I took Muhammad, this baby Muhammad, mm. I had an old goat whose udders filled up with milk immediately. And then my animals became the fastest of the animals especially when this orphan child would sit on my animals. And normally, people would foster for two years, but I ended up fostering him again and kept, kept him for a lot longer because I kept seeing the blessings that would come from him. Okay, I've paraphrased the end of it because I didn't want to go through all of it, but we understand from here that Am um, Halima, having taken this baby from Amina, she saw all these blessings. But then at the very end, she had to give um, um, Muhammad back, Muhammad sallam, back to Amina. And this is because of the story of the splitting of the chest. So this is what we know about fostering. Now I'm going to go into the story of the splitting of the chest. Just Ooh. before I do, have any of you guys heard the story of the splitting of the chest? No. no. Okay, I'm going to talk about that now because this do. is a very... You do? And Stay quiet. Let's see what everyone... Knows about it. That eh? would be a From full a, story. It is a full story. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the splitting of the chest. So, what's, what is the splitting of the chest? We know from Anas ibn Malik, one of the Sahabas, he says, when the Prophet ﷺ was four years old and he was playing with the other foster children that he was with, Jibreel came to the children. And when Jibreel came, Jibreel is the biggest archangel, archangel, the most wow. important angel. When the Jibreel came, all the other children got scared and they ran away. But the Prophet ﷺ decided he was going to stay strong. He's only a four-year-old little boy, same age as you, Taisha. Only four, but he stood strong. But wow. Jibreel took the Prophet, laid him down from his chest, took his heart, found a black line sliver, took it out, threw it away, then took his heart, washed it with Zamzam water and put his heart back and sealed his chest back up again. Now, this is something amazing because this can only really happen in hospitals nowadays. But if you think 1,400 to 500 years ago, this happened to the Prophet Sallallahu um, And a big sheikh on television quoted this was probably the first ever live heart surgery that took place. Anyway, that's probably a joke aside, but this is what happened. So the, after this happened, the other children had run back to Halima and her husband and were saying to her, Oh no, you're not going to believe it. This old man had taken Muhammad and, and powered him to the floor. So when Halima and the other foster mother, Bedouin ladies, they went running back, they went and found the Prophet Sallallahu sitting up straight. But he had a look on his face of, of shock. And he was in a straight face. I'm, I'm going to try to do an impression. He was maybe like this. So they could tell something had happened. 
Okay, the Prophet later on told the Sahaba that that black sliver that Jibreel had thrown out, that was the element that the shaitan would use to go try to enter people's hearts. So we all have it. We all have this black sliver. But the Prophet Sallallahu one was removed. Okay, as a result of this incident, Halima returned the Prophet Sallallahu back to Amina and said, okay, you can have your son back. So she had him all those years and she had to return him. Now, we spoke, already spoke last week about how Ham, how Halima, um, how sorry, Amina passed away. So we don't need to go into that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of skip now 50 or 60 years forward because many wow. years later, when the Prophet وسلم, was the full fledged Prophet and he was going on expedition and they went to the southern regions of Hunayn and Taif, they came across Shayma. Now, the, at the time, wars used to happen. So when they took over the army, this lady stood up and she said, no, you cannot arrest me because I am the sis foster sister of your prophet. And when they said, how could this be? They went and she said, yeah, I still have his teeth bite marks on my shoulder. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a four year old, as a little child, he must have bitten Shayma and the marks were still on her chest because he bit her. So we know how important this story is and it's amazing because the, um, some of the hadith say that then Halima was also brought back to meet the Prophet and the Prophet وسلم, laid his own shawl down on the floor for Halima to sit down because this was his foster mother. So, subhanAllah, it's an amazing story um, and there's a lot more detail and I, I actually said quite a lot but there's still more detail in the story of, um, on the story of um, the, the, the Jibreel coming washing the Prophet's heart because some of it is, you know, it's quite interesting and maybe not for children. So maybe you get, when you get older, you get a chance to um, talk, um, talk about that with your parents. Tashana, I'm going to talk to you. Tell me, tell us about where, when you go for her, what do you do to get ready for her? What do you pack in your for bag? Okay? So I go to for like um, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock in the morning on a Saturday? Yeah. Okay. And Sunday. And Saturday and Sunday you go nine o'clock in the morning. So do you wake up nice and early? No, sometimes I want to sleep. Oops. <laughs> I know. We all feel a little bit tired, don't we? Yeah. It's when okay. I wake up, then I brush my teeth. Okay. Then um, I change my clothes. Because mm -hmm. you can't I... go to Fora in pyjamas, can you? No. <laughs> okay. And then I, um, I eat some snack. Very good, yes. And, and then I... Uh, and then I get uh, my Quran brown, and then um, and then go to um, the fora. Very good, Taisha. Do you go fora? No, no. she doesn't. Do you want to go? You can't yeah. wait, can you? Suleiman, how about you? How is your routine for going to fora? First, after school. So one second. Tushana's was Saturday and Sunday, but yours is on the evenings, isn't it? So your, one, your routine's a bit different because you're coming back from school, aren't you? I'm coming back from school. Okay. I have to wait two hours. Okay. Oh. So after school, you've got two hours to wait before Fora, yeah? I play around with my ball. After that, I just, I just uh, get ready. Um, it's at five o'clock. First, I put all of my stuff in, but then there's something called break time. So I have to get all of these things, but only like two or three snacks. Mm. Oh, so you're allowed to take snacks into your fodder? Yeah. Mm. Carry on. And then I go in, and then... And, and who takes changed. you to fodder? Or do you walk by yourself? <sighs> when you're eight years old, you can't go to fodder by yourself. I didn't you? think so. <laughs> so, dad takes you? Normally mum. Normally mum. Mm. Dad takes me when I go home. Uh, oh, dad picks you up and mum takes you. Very good. Cool. I hope you've got an interesting story um, on Fora because I've heard a lovely story from Tushana. Six a stories. lovely story from um, Suleiman. Um, I also went Fora. And hey, in when? my days, when? Um, when I was a kid, and actually I still go Fora now. Would you believe <gasps> it? Yes. Huh? Um, I still go Fora now. But mine is cool. called Ibrahim College for older kids. Oh. So it's an adult thing. But Fora is something that happens all your life. For those of you guys that are at home and you're sometimes, oh, I'm getting fed up, I don't want to go for a... Yeah, that's right. know that you do actually do it all so your life. It's so boring. Yeah. It's so boring. Does that feel like that? But yeah. do you know what? I what have playtime. You have playtime in the fora. You get yeah. to make new friends. Yeah. You learn Quran. Don't you? Yeah. You sometimes I've got all the same friends in school. And so some school. of your friends in school, you also seen fora, isn't I've it? I've got loads of friends. Wow. So that's what's great about fora. 
you get to I, make new friends, you enjoy your time with friends here, yeah. and you actually, by learning the Quran, you're yeah. building up your good deeds for your afterlife. Yeah? yeah. So that you, when we're on the Day of yeah. Judgment, you have good deeds to help you go to heaven, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good thing, yeah. And look at me. I still go for as well myself, even though mine is called the adult class. I still go to Fora. Um, so, going to Fora is something that happens all your life. And why? It's because you're saving up um, your good deeds on, for the Day of Judgment. And I think that nicely brings us on to um, probably the moral for today and probably looking at the moral of looking at the Sira part that we spoke about and then looking at the good deeds of getting ready. I think routine is a very important word here and organisation because you're organising yourself to get ready for Fora because you need to make sure you've got the right books. You can't put your in, um, school book bags into your Fora bag, can you? Because imagine you went to Sephora by accident and the teacher said, can you get the Quran out? And you got a Harry Potter book out. <laughs> that won't be very good. So yeah, you need to have a routine. So being organised and being ready, this yeah. is good characteristics of a Muslim as well. Because you learn during the day about the world and in the evening you learn Islam and you learn Quran for your afterlife. So you're spending so much time learning. We spend our whole life learning. We're at school all day. Mums and dads are teaching us. And even you coming onto this TV show, you're learning things. You guys watching at home, you're learning things. So we're always learning. So it's good to be have a routine and be organised to learn things. Do you guys want to say anything about learning? Do you like learning, Tashana? Yeah, I you do. do. I, I love learning the Quran and the, and the Fatayon now. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Tushana loves learning the Quran. Beautiful. Taisha, what do you like learning? <laughs> she likes do you like it. learning nursery rhymes? And you like learning duas? I Very good. Duas. And Suleiman, what do you like about learning? I like about learning is in school. In my school, I get in maths, but the head teacher never ever gets gets to test me on something called the HTT. My um, head teacher's times tables award. The first day she says, "Oh, I'm going to test you, Suleiman." The next day she doesn't test you. So I test me. <laughs> Suleiman has an amazing experience of learning maths. That's what I caught him from that. And he has well, a head teacher. And you have a HTTA, a head teacher's teaching award, yeah? Very but good. But Listen, guys, there's so many things. Like, Suleiman, I would love to go more about the school, but we've run out of time. We've oh, run no. out of time. I'm so the sorry, guys. The head teacher needs Maybe to be organised. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a word of your head teacher if we can. <laughs> but we've got to go. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you to Shana, to Aisha, and Suleiman, as always. Thank you to you guys at home for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this learning show. Join us next time when we go to the next part of the Sira and we look at some more good deeds. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.